just going to be talking about doing uh, to placing topical anesthetic. First, as an assistant, you're going to come over to the schedule and click on the patient, and you want to make sure that you um, find out which part of the mouth they're working on for that day. For this page, page you're going to be doing working on four teeth. So you're going to bring up the patient's chart. So they're working on 28, 29, 2, and 3. So you're going to pull up their chart. So they're going to be working on the uh, right side of the mouth. 2, 3, 28, and 29. You're going to place two topical anesthetics. They're working on the right side of the mouth. You're going to take, you're going to take one and place it I can't move this cursor, right above um, the, the gums on two and three because they're working between these two teeth. And then you're going to just place one in the back behind the very back molar up about one centimeter. Um, we will show you that in the mouth. The most important thing, a lot of people think that you need to get gobs of anesthetic solution to put onto the mouth, but you really only need a small amount. Just on the tip. And you'll need two because you're placing two because we're going to be giving two injections. Now it's time to uh, call for anesthetic. You want to make sure that you don't place it as soon as you call for it because sometimes the hygienist cannot make it over there for another 10 minutes. It's ideal to place it and wait about a minute before giving the injection. Okay, we're going to be working on the right side of the mouth. So first you would like to dry the tissue before placing the topical. We're going to first place the one on the top between two and three. So you dry the tissue off and then you want to place it the very height of the mucobuckle fold which is right at the top. Okay, it's really important on the lower arch where to place the topical anesthetic. Dry the tissue off. What you want to do is you want to feel this notch of bone on the lower teeth and you're going to place it about one centimeter above the back tooth and that's the ideal location. Okay, ideally these should be placed a minute before the hygienist or doctor gives the injection. That allows the tissue to be numb before the needle penetrates the skin. One thing we don't want to hear on our intercom system is, is there any available hygienist to give anesthesia or is there any available hygienist for periodontal screening? Let's never use those words. What that does is that takes responsibility off of you, the assistant, to determine who can actually come and help. And it puts the stress on the hygienist who may already have a very packed schedule. She doesn't even want to take the time to say, no, I'm busy. It looks bad to say that in front of the patient. And it makes her look like she doesn't want to cooperate. Frankly, what you need to be doing is checking the hygienist's schedule and asking specifically for the hygienist that you think or actually can see is available. If she's not available and she looks busy, you need to have the doctor come in and do the periodontal screening or give the anesthesia. Let's take a look at the schedule so we can see how that would work. What I would do first is I would look at the hygiene columns. Today is a light hygiene day, but even though it's a light hygiene day, I can see that this hygienist patient is here. What I don't want to do is say, will you please come give anesthetic? Because I know she's already busy. Her patient was just seated and she just sat down. How do I know that? Well, I can look at the schedule or I can go and find out for myself. I can get off my chair and see how busy does the hygienist look. Now if I notice the hygienist schedule after this one patient looks empty, she probably would have time to come up and help. But ideally I'd look and see if another hygienist is available. Check their schedule and ask specifically for the hygienist that you feel is going to be available. Sometimes it might take a personal 
um, contact with the hygiene assistant or the hygienist to see if they are available. Do not use the walkie-talkies to blanketly just call for anybody to come and help. It's rude. It makes the stress higher for everybody. Thanks.